I became a software engineer without doing coding interview. I don't have a CS degree. I did not attend a bootcamp and didn't have previous experience coding a product or writing production level code before. If you're like me and would like to attempt to become a software engineer without spending hours and hours doing lead code and going through the tedious and stressful coding interview, then keep watching because I'll be providing a few tips that help me land a software engineering role without coding interview. Hi everyone, welcome to The Apprentice Diary. This is Elena. I'm a software engineer at the Series C startup. And if you're new to this channel, I share about my journey in academia, my side hustles, lifestyle and career as a new software engineer. Now, first, let me give you a little bit of backstory. I graduated with a Master of Science from MIT back in 2020 and immediately transitioned into working on my startup with two partners, which eventually folded in January 2021. During that time, I did some coding, but mainly just Googling snippet of code I needed to get things done and never really felt comfortable as a coder before. After failing on this startup, I decided it was time to get some industry experience and start making real money instead of living off of my husband's salary. So in the beginning of 2021, I started one of the most depressing and unknown period of my adult life, which was job hunting in the middle of the pandemic. The worst part of this was that I didn't really know what role or position would fit me well, and I have a lot of self-doubt. During college, I chose to get experience in academia as a research assistant instead of getting an engineering internship in industry. And this set me up for a pack for grad school, but did not really prepare me for industry and of course, making real money. After graduating from college with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, I worked on my first educational startup in Panama, where me and my friends created custom STEM curriculum, teaching children and adults of all educational level how to use technologies such as robotics, electronics, basic programming that I learned here in the US. I spent most of 2016 and 17 going from school to school in Panama, giving workshops and talks. Based on my previous education and work experience, I thought maybe I could apply to a PM role that is product program project management in tech. I looked into some of the APM program, but most of them were only open in the fall. So it was not the greatest time to be looking for a job in the winter. I was pretty open-minded about the job search and literally applied to any role I thought I might be able to contribute to. And that included data analyst, PM, technical writer, general consultant, community advocate and business manager. One role that I was very hesitant to apply for was software engineering because I knew I would have to go through a set of coding interview in order to even get a chance. I've taken a few programming courses during college, have taught basic programming for Arduino and developed on Unity using C Sharp for my master, but never felt comfortable coding. I think this was mainly because I felt like I didn't have the fundamental programming off the top of my head and was not able to come up with algorithm to solve specific problem. So I find myself always Googling and taking snippet of codes off the internet to get things done, which reinforces my self doubt in my ability to be successful as a software engineer. I literally felt like I had more of a chance of getting into McKinsey for consulting than any other company as a software engineer and would rather spend the time actively practicing case studies, estimation problem, fast mental math, instead of doing lead code. So three months into my job search, 50 plus straight rejection, and I was still unemployed. I initiated the interview process with a few company, but I felt like I should have done more. So I changed my strategy a bit. And instead of submitting an application online, I also reached out to my network and asked if they had any role open where I could contribute my skills. Here's where things started to get better. A friend of mine who worked for a successful startup reached out asking if I was interested in a role closely related to the technology I use for my master thesis. I agreed to get on a call with the hiring tech lead and from the sound of it, it was more of like an R&D role where I would need to create prototype, do some experiment, testing and validation, talk with customer, and hopefully create a roadmap for a potential new product line for the startup. This all sounded super exciting because I was familiar with this generalist jack of all trades role where I get to explore every aspect of a product from beginning to end. 
During the interview process, we talk about different aspects of my short career. I show them my portfolio, talk about my previous startup experience, and my master thesis work as well. They did mention that for this role, there would be some emphasis on coding since it is a software startup. I didn't think that that would be much of a problem because I was not really afraid of coding, but afraid of the coding interview. The process was surprisingly faster than we expected. I think mainly because I mentioned that I was going through my final rounds with other companies and needed to speed things up a bit. So we skipped a lot of the formality. Ultimately, I ended up with an offer with the title of a software engineer, and it was the best thing that could have happened. I didn't expect that. Just having the title of software engineer for a company changed how I felt about my abilities and my mentality as well. The support and encouragement I received from my coworkers and tech leads were so positive that I went from not knowing a single line of React to contributing consistently to the code base and building and improving features of the product that is being used by thousands of customers right, right now. I've been in this role for exactly a year now and it's been a great journey. Now that I look back, if I were to give advice to my previous self, the first thing that I would recommend is to reach out to my own network way earlier during the job search. And this involves sending an email to people you work or talk with, or even people just connected to you through a community like your school. I mean, I also reach out to people that I didn't even talk with, but I met during conferences and hackathon. The second piece of advice is to reach out to your friends or acquaintance who are working for a small startup with less than 100 people. Chances are they are more lenient and forgiving with their interview process. Try to impress them with your portfolio of projects, talk about the technology behind them, and show that you possess some sort of technical skill that could be valuable for their company. My third piece of advice is to be honest off the bat during the interview. So I told my hiring tech lead that I do not consider myself a good coder because my previous experience was mainly building prototype and not production code. This way, I don't come into the role with imposter syndrome and they will hopefully have a lower expectation of my coding abilities. However, make sure you emphasize your ability and willingness to become better at the job and also show them that you have all their valuable skill set that could help the team and also the company. My fourth and most important advice that I will give to my younger self is to surround myself with people who are very kind and generous enough to help you improve as a person and also in your career. Honestly, this kind of support gave me so much more confidence in my own ability to improve and become a better software engineer and to keep my mental health sane and positive. If you want to see how a normal day looks like for me, check out my video called A Day in the Life of a Software Engineer Working Remotely. And I'll put it somewhere over here so it's easier for you. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to this channel and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.